thank you guys for coming out tonight. This is the complete semi slav part five. So we got some people that have uh, been here before. We got some new faces, which is cool. Um, what was your name, by the way? Daniel. Daniel. Okay. Um, how good are you at chess? I don't know. Not good. Okay, that's fine. Um, so you are starting on part five, but as always, it's you can always jump in at any point um, during this series here. So we are looking at the semi slav. So we've already covered this. So we're going to skip to the part we're at now. We're still looking at the e three lines. Um, next week, we will begin our coverage of the bishop to g5 lines. Those are very exciting. Um, but for now, we're still looking at queen c2. Again, we're just making a useful waiting move. The alternative is bishop to d3, which we've had a look at before. But this does allow black to take here and play b5 with tempo. So that explains the move queen to c2. Just a useful waiting move. And now it doesn't make sense for black to take here. So black needs to find a useful developing move bishop to d6. And last week, we reached this position and we covered the main line, which is bishop to d3. And we also had a look at the move b3, just protecting the pawn. But tonight, we're going to look at a very fascinating, very aggressive move. I teased you guys with it a little bit last week. g4. Yeah, I see some, some heads turning. I played with you played this? Which, which side were you? You were white and you played this? All right, awesome. Did you know lots of theory? A little bit. You knew a little bit? All right, that's good. So yeah, maybe you'll be able to help us out here. Um, this is the Shirov Shabalov attack. So both of them known for their you know, kind of crazy aggressive styles. So it makes sense that uh, Shirov, who played it first, you know, he, you know, and it's 2,700, so it's something that he came up with. And uh, Shabalov also has helped popularize it, playing it dozens of times. Um, wow, g4, right? I mean, that's if you've never seen this before, wouldn't you hate to run into this in a tournament? Your opponent's just played g4, and uh, you know, if that is a big surprise to you, um, things can go downhill rather quickly. Now, surprisingly, there's actually four moves in this position that are played quite frequently. Two of them have been played about 1,200 times each. It's, I think, a database is like exactly the same. And the other two have been played about 600 times each. So there's two really popular moves and two less popular moves. But I guess my first question, and I, I do want to get the audience involved because we got a, a good crowd here tonight. Uh, my question is, what are the four moves? Yeah. One is knight takes g4 for sure, yeah. Um, castles is actually not a very popular move. If you castle, it allows me to just play g5. Um, and I think actually it was a Shirov game where this happened. And well, that's not a very good square. Um, and you can go back here. And then I believe there's a game with Shirov where he just simply went here and he castled. Um, I don't know. It's not really where you, you want your knight. And it's uh, white is actually about to open up the center. He plays bishop d2, castles. And he plays immediately the move e4. And this knight actually can end up off sides, especially if you know, I could put my bishop here. It's sort of a, a weird square for the knight, because it's, it's not really easy to come back into the game. Um, I'm trying to think of who his opponent was, because uh, there was a really good game um, where somebody castled. Uh, but you don't want to actually castle into this attack that white has here. So we've, we've come up with one move, though. Yeah. H6. H6. Uh, this is one of the moves, sure, just preventing g5. Uh, C5. C5 is not a move. Um, I assume I just played G5. Yeah, so this is actually not a move. I think this is just sort of the same deal here. I'll just play G5. Um, again, you can go to H5. Um, but yeah, so we do have to really be worried. We don't really want white to play G5 when we have to put our knight on the side or put our knight on E8 or, or somewhere we don't really want to go. So all of the moves do have something to do with anticipating the move g5 by white. Yeah? Uh, g5? The super counter Arjun Gambit uh, with maximal confusion. And actually, I did look at this. That's what's funny is you're not the first person to say this. But white has a really, really strong move. You ready to be shocked? Yeah. Also, how do I know this? It's, it's crazy. H4. 
page five. Actually, somebody did this. It was like a month ago, but actually, nobody's ever done this, but somehow I'm still prepared here. And then the computer said, like, white's winning. Do you agree yet? Kind of. So I think you have to take on g4, and then I play bishop h3. Yeah, so I think like this I've looked at, and then e4 might also be a thing. But I'm threatening to take your knight and then take your rook. Yeah. You see, you want to keep going? Yeah, white's well, yeah, well, at least better. Um, yeah, g5, not a move, unsurprisingly. Um, and yeah, so the other ones I think are a little bit harder to find. Maybe knight e4. Knight e4, just a, a gambit here. You want to do this. And in this line, actually, I mean, I, I doubt this you know, is, is very good here. In this line, though, actually, you do sacrifice pawns as both colors quite frequently, especially when you just get more active pieces. We're going to notice in a lot of these lines, what really matters is piece activity more than material. So there's going to be lots of sacrifices in these lines. Um, and OK, maybe you can play a move like e5. Maybe this is your, your whole point. but. Uh, I'm not really buying the, the whole sacrifice here. Um, so just going back here, I'll go ahead and give these away now. Well, one of them is to take on the c4, which may seem anti-positional. You're you know, giving away a center pawn for a side pawn. What's the deal there? And you're maybe helping my, my development. I'll just take back with my bishop on c4. But you are giving your knight access to d5. So in lines like this, if you take and they play g5, you can put your knight on d5. Um, and so we will actually have a look at that. The other move is bishop to b4. So you're pinning it. So now if g5, you can play knight e4. That's the idea. Um, and I have another question for the class, too. Which There's two popular moves and two less popular moves. Can you guys put them? In the, in the right category. So which two are the popular ones, and which two are the, the unpopular ones? It might surprise you. Yeah, and so that's why I assume that's what most people would think. But surprisingly, knight takes g4, not a very popular move. It's in the, the bottom of, of popularity. I think bishop b4 might be truly the least common. But knight takes is actually a very unpopular move, which is kind of surprising. Normally, when there's a gambit, you take it. But it's not really a gambit. So the two main moves are taking on c4 and h6, which have been played. I think one of them was played like with one game more, according to chess base. Um, but let's go ahead and let's just start here with this. I think this is a good way to start. And it's not even really a true gambit. So it's called the Shear of Shabalov attack, not the Shear of Shabalov gambit, even though everybody will always sack all of their pawns in these lines. Um, and so we reached this position, and this was the point. I played g4 so that if you take it, I play rook g1. And we're going to look at it from White's point of view tonight. Just because if you're clicking on this, maybe you want to see it from White's point of view. So for something different, we're looking at it from White's point of view tonight. And there's two moves here. The most popular move is to take on h2. I think that, you know, you, you won a pawn. That's very good. I'm going to take back on, on g7. So we're going to look at this for sequence in a minute. However, I do want to mention this, uh, this other tricky move here, queen to f6. And this one I like in particular because once I played somebody rated about 400 points higher rated than me, and he thought he would surprise me with g4, but I had this queen f6 line prepared. So it's not a very popular move, but I don't think it's bad at all. And we're actually going to see a game between Mamedarov and Anand that was played in 2013 that uh, I knew of at the time. And uh, well, it was just a, a very good game, and it was a quick miniature. So we'll have a look at that. But what's funny is when I played this, I was losing like the whole game. But that didn't matter, because for the whole game, both me and my opponent thought I was winning. And in chess, sometimes that's you know more important, just thinking that you're winning. So we both thought I was winning. And then so I was very confident sitting at the board <laughs> confidently. And then I went on to win. Um, so that's something funny that just bringing that attitude to the chessboard actually can result in a lot of wins. Do you have that, do you have that attitude that you're just, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. When you just bring that ferocious attitude that you're going to be able to win. So yeah, even though it wasn't, wasn't well-founded, we both thought I was winning. And then 
that was the result. OK, so after they take here, we're going to look at this Anand game. So Anand had black in this position, uh, and now Rook takes g7. OK, so material is equal. Um, and what's nice about this line rather than the main line is this queen is actually a little bit annoying on f3. I don't know how much white really enjoys that. Um, so after knight to f6, another idea is to go to f8 and try to go to g6, because then you trap the rook and you can play king f8 and take the rook. Um, so that's one other line. But we're just going to look at knight to f6. This is what was Anand's choice, centralizing a piece. How could that be wrong? Uh, and now bishop to d2. And this is already a mistake, though it's, which is sort of surprising. The main move is rook to g5, which is a very sneaky move. If I do nothing, uh, what was white's threat? Let's see if we can understand rook to g5. I think this is a tricky move. You know, were you just trying to stop me from playing e5, or what else? Arjun? Bishop g2. This would trap the queen. Yeah, so very sneaky move. Um, so instead, you know, the queen will have to move, like queen h1 would be played. Um, but in this game, bishop d2 was played. Hmm. And it's not super obvious how the fact that you just blocked this could actually be an issue at all. But here, knight to g4 with some rather annoying pressure on f2 and h2. Um, and if I remember, the computer actually wants you to just sack the exchange because it's already that bad. So black already has a very dominant position. In the game, knight d1. OK, it's not the dream move that you wanted to play in this position. OK, you took on h2. Uh, this is also sort of a mistake, I think. But So yeah, I haven't looked at this file in like a month, but we'll try to remember some things. But in this position now, not trading, but rook g8 with you know all sorts of annoying pressure down the g file. Um, so he went here. Now I think there's, there's lots of good moves. Rook g1 was also totally crushing. Uh, he went here. Oh, and this is funny, too. Let's see. Was it here? Yeah, so it's here. Um, so he went here. This is the only blemish on the game. Black actually had an amazing tactic. You can pause at home. I'm just going to give it away for the live audience. But uh, he could have played knight takes. Check. OK, so we take back, right? And now is it? If it's not here. Oh, yeah, I think I go here. And then if you save this guy, I have an amazing move. Boop. So if, yeah, so if here, boop. <laughs> um, so there was that. You know, amazing combination that could have been played. OK, everyone here, this is also totally winning. Um, I'm going to try to get through a lot of games today, so we're not going to spend too, too much time on any one. Yeah, that was a good move. And he took here, which was a mistake. Because um, now here and here, I'm going to checkmate you on e2. You can take my stuff. And here, OK, the, the checks are going to run out. Um, no matter what you do. So white had resigned instead of doing maybe this. And your checks quickly run out. Yeah. So a very fast win for black. And there's a lot of really short games, even at you know top level, two very top-notch players in that position. Um, so you can kind of see just how fast you can actually go wrong in a position like this. OK, but let's have one more run through of this position. Um, so queen f6 is a very interesting move. More popular is here. Um, and now there's sort of a, a four sequence after we trade. They can take on g7. And we're going to follow now the game between uh, Richard Rapport and Pavel Elyanov from Beal 2015. Um, so yeah, Rapport known for his very uh, imaginative 
entertaining style. Um, is playing another very strong player. Um, he's one of the club mates' favorite players here. Um, one thing, okay, so black's up a pawn, but it is the h7 pawn. And black actually has to be kind of worried because he's a long way from having his, a safe king. For example, we have to get all of, these pieces, uh, all of these pieces out of the way before we can think of castling. And otherwise, we're just going to stay in the center. Um, and white, for his part, well, most commonly, I can play bishop d2, castle, and e4 and start doing stuff in the center. And kind of like how in the Banco Gambit, when your opponent has a pawn like this, they can sometimes actually get stuck defending their extra pawn. So maybe in the future, if I can bring this rook over somewhere over here, um, I can get lots of pressure on the king side. So these are the kinds of things that white is looking to do. He did give up a pawn, but I'm going to develop really fast. I'm going to play e4 and open the center, and I'm going to get at your king before you can castle. That's, that's his plan, at least. OK, in the game, knight to f8. And it is also worth noting that um, as white, white is thinking about playing a move like f4. Because then you know your bishop is a little trapped. So if instead here, you actually run into some problems. So you do have to be careful. This is a constant idea. Um, so instead, he went to f8. Maybe I'll play knight to g6. And so instead, he went here. So again, yeah. So if here, now I can just go here. Actually, I think I toss this guy in first. So something like this um, is definitely fine for black. Uh, so instead, rook g2 was played, kicking the bishop back. And e4. Uh, more common, again, is bishop d2 and castling. But he went for it right away. He's like, all right, well, I'll just open it up. Knight g6. And now bishop g5. Um, it's not very easy to move the queen away. Because if the queen goes anywhere, then bishop f6. Could be a little bit annoying. It's a good square for a bishop. So he went back. And now sort of a, a surprising decision. But first I'll ask, in this type of structure, who wants to trade the dark squared bishops? Just in general positional terms. Why does white, does, white is, everyone saying white? white? Yeah, why does white want to trade the dark squared bishops? Uh, to accentuate the dark squared yeah. weaknesses. Right, yeah, because there's all these dark squares that you know, could be very weak if we end up trading these dark squared bishops. So most commonly in this type of position, people will actually trade the bishops here. So a very surprising, controversial decision. <coughs> Excuse me. Bishop to e3. And perhaps he's thinking, well, I'm going to do the attacking. I got the center, and I'm going to open it up. and. You still have to move some pieces out of the way if you want to castle to safety. So I can still castle long. Then I can take a lot of stuff in the center. Uh, so maybe he's thinking, well, I'm going to use my bishop because I'm going to attack. I don't want to trade pieces. Um, all right. So here. And he, like here, he actually makes another interesting decision. So black just took a pawn. So you could consider recapturing it. But he plays a little bit more. Provocatively, he just castles. So Weiss actually made some sort of interesting decisions. He didn't trade the bishops. He didn't take the pawn back. So black says, I'll keep it. Now I'm two pawns up. No. And so white has to demonstrate his ability to open the center, to get some attack going, to get some sort of compensation here. And in the game, it just never really happened. Um, d5, that's a good start. But now queen a5, I mean, bishop d7, I'm going to castle. So yeah, you got to play d5, but uh, you know, what are you, what's your plan now? Yeah, it's a good pawn, yeah. But it is two pawns, queen e5. Um, and now white plays a very interesting move. I think it might even be the best move. But white's position is actually pretty bad. You're down two pawns. And if unless you actually have something here, and perhaps he, he doesn't, 
just based on the game, <laughs> um, you know, Mike can be in trouble. So I think he was a little bit too imaginative for, for his own good. He was too clever by half. Knight to b5. Which in itself is a very good move. The point is, if you take bishop c3, and then you got some problems on this diagonal. But he just went to f7. Um, now everything's fine. And the knight went here. And so if we have a look now, OK, I'm still two pawns up. Well, this looks like a nice pawn, kind of, but how is it ever going to go forward? The knight is right way in black's territory, but it's stuck there. What is it really doing? Um, so there's, there's really not a whole lot that white can claim as a, as a big advantage here. And you know these are some top players, so the side with more pawns ended up winning. Um, so we'll just show a few more moves here. It's a very funny way to trade. Uh, and here, white actually resigned. Well, I think it's a technically lost position, and you know these guys are pros. But if, for example, here, I think black maybe would have just simply gone here, or the more entertaining way, he could have gone to h3, and then wherever this rook goes, um, he sort of controls the entire board, and white's pieces are stuck. So black will slowly win this position. And so uh, white, in this game, I think he just he tried to be a little bit too clever. It's sort of the thing that you want to happen, but he gave away too many pawns, um, and he didn't trade those bishops right away. And that actually got him into a lot of trouble. So that was one interesting game. OK, let's have a look at, at another move. Um, which one should we look at? Yeah. Bishop b4. OK. Which is probably the least popular, but some very strong players have played it. So we're actually going to look at a game now between Gelfand and Kramnik. It was played in 1996. So it was, it was a while back that this game was played. But again, the point is, if g5, now we can go here, and we can bring our queen in, and we can get lots of pressure on c3. That's, that's the main idea. OK, so instead, bishop d2 was played. So now, again, I'm, I'm thinking about playing a move like g5. Queen e7. And a3. So I'm going to try to win the bishop pair. So in this game, OK. So you've won the bishop pair, um, which is, you know, which is a very fair accomplishment. But what's interesting is, is now a move like this. I'm going to play bishop to a6. Uh, at some moment, maybe I can play a move like e5. Maybe my knight can go to e4. Um, maybe, I'd, maybe I will end up castling this way if, if I'm allowed. Because um, without this knight here, you know, sometimes if, if g5, I actually have this square for my knight. So I actually might be able to castle more in here. And it's interesting to see just who gets their pieces developed faster in this particular line. Because um, now we see some very, something very interesting. After queen to a4, just attacking the bishop. Black took on c4 with a pawn. So we get this fancy way of trading. And in a position like this, we're kind of wishing you know, we hadn't played g4. Because now this position would be sort of a semi-normal position, except for you know, we created weaknesses for some reason. And black's going to play c5 or e5. He's going to castle, and you know, everything's fine. So castles, g5. So notice now that we protected this, maybe, maybe we're thinking about taking it. So g5. Knight d5. Um, and yes, yeah, so I don't think white got anything special out of the opening. Um, and it remains to be seen where he's going to put his king. Now f5. And OK, maybe, it, maybe stronger was c5 or e5. I think e5 is a pretty strong move here. But this also is a pretty strong move, just making sure you keep the king side closed. Notice if here, I will take back with my queen, which would be really good for black. OK, so instead, he castled long. 
So we get an opposite side castling situation, which is actually quite common in these sorts of lines. Um, C5. Black should open the C file. King B1. Now we want to do stuff on that side of the board. B5. Sacrificing a pawn. And it's, it's difficult for white because it's hard to take it and it's hard not to take it. Because if you don't take it, I mean, I can play moves like c4, b4. Um, and I'm going to be, my attack seems to be a lot faster. White's attack hasn't really started over here. In the game, he did take it. So now I can use the b file. And in the game, black went on to, you know, masterfully attack his opponent. B3, king a2. So he doubles up. And white is stuck passively defending. And now black found a really strong continuation. E5, just breaking in the center. Also, maybe I can put my queen on this diagonal, which would be kind of scary for white. So here black has a big attack, and, and white hasn't gotten anything going. So yeah, we just line up our queen with our king. King got out of that diagonal. Uh, but everything here really favors black. He took. And this position is quite bad for white. But here he sort of compounded his, his misery here by taking on c5. And this is, in fact, definitely losing now. However, uh, you may want to pause your videos at home. Uh, can you actually see the, the victory from here? So there's a very nice combination. You have to find some only moves. And we'll, we'll test the audience here. So I think this is a little bit tougher, so I do want to give you guys a little bit of time. So go ahead and think about this for a couple minutes, and I'll, I'll see what you guys come up with here. Yeah, if you got an idea. OK. And it takes rook, yeah. And uh, well, in the game, he took here. What happens if I take here? This is sort of the idea. This also is a move to be considered. Um, there's probably more than one move here. Yeah, you have an idea? Takes on d6. It's black to move. Queen d6. Yeah, I think this is fine. And this, you know, this just looks really good. Because if here, you're not going to be happy. I think I can just go back. Well, I can take this. Or I mean, I can just probably just go back. This. I can take the queen, too. Yeah, I was wondering if this is stronger. But OK, taking the queen should be enough. So yeah, I would, if I can't calculate this winning, then I guess I take your queen. But this looks really winning, too. <laughs> You think taking the queen is better? Yeah. But only if this if this leads to mate, then you should play this. It would be, so you know you'd have to take your time. Um, but it's worth it's worth thinking about. Otherwise this also just totally wins. So for that reason, in this position here, we take on C5. Welcome to the class. And here is the move that you have to see as black. Again, there's only one move. So hopefully you guys saw this position, and then you found this brilliant move. Because without this move, you really have nothing. All right, knight c3. So you have to remind me your name again? Daniel. Daniel. All right. Yeah, Daniel's on the ball. OK. Uh, well, I can't really take it either way. So he went here. Now. Do we see the, the finish? Uh, Rook takes a3. It's suggested, but I will take back. Obviously, I can't take with my pawn, so I'll take with my queen. Um, I, don't, I don't really see your follow-up here, because I'm on your knight and your queen. Mm -hmm. So not quite. You want to play queen c5? What do you say? If white's queen wasn't on c5. Uh, 
Rook takes b2. Yeah, again, excellent. And in the game he took back. Everything else loses. All right. How old are you? Eight. You're eight? Yeah, so, so easy even an eight-year-old could see it, so white resigned. Have you two played each other? No. No? Okay. Okay, but the obvious point for anybody interested is here, checkmate. So a fantastic combination um, from in this position. Uh, after the rook takes, black just had to calculate. And yeah, good job for our audience. We got a really strong audience tonight, and we were able to figure out all of these tactics. Yeah, knight c3, a very fun move to be able to play. And then, okay, obviously to sack your queen to finish him off is a very nice way to finish any game. All right, so we'll go back. Okay, so we're returning to this position. So if you're just joining us, this is the position we're starting at tonight. And uh, there's two moves we haven't talked about. Yeah, you want to pick one? H6. H6. And this is sort of becoming the more popular way to play. So we'll, for time, I guess we're going to have to sort of zoom through this game. But I wanted to show a game that was just played this year, meaning 2016, though I think this is going out in 2017 um, by the time you guys see it at home. But I want to show you the game between Nakamura and Muzichuk played in Gibraltar this year, 2016. Um, and in the game, he played the main move Nakamura did, which is rook to g1. The alternative is bishop to d2, which also makes a lot of sense. I'm just going to prioritize development. And if you didn't take my g-pawn before, you're not going to take it now after playing the move h6, because I still play rook g1, and you'll get sort of the same sort of positions. So instead, they normally take. Uh, and we'll sort of look at these taking lines in the future. And here's one of the rare cases where in this g4 line you can actually play the move b5. It's important to actually go to e2 because with the bishop coming to this diagonal, notice you did move your g-pawn, so sometimes this guy actually needs some protection. After e4, we can go back, uh, just to give you an example. And these lines normally, you know, black is to play c5. And it's sort of similar to the lines we were looking at in the previous weeks. So we won't go too much into it, we'll just... Uh, leave it here and say, okay, very acceptable for black. And in a lot of these lines, sometimes we ask ourselves, you know, why did white play the move g4? Um, our goal as, as black is to try to exploit it and make it look as silly as possible. However, in this game, rook g1, this is the main move. And, okay, so if you castle, you know, you're going to run into moves like h4, g5. That would be sort of problematic. Okay, but e5. And here Nakamura played... A very uncommon move, um, it's, which is virtually unplayed. So more common is taking. And if you remember the structures we were looking at last week, in a lot of these structures, white has this familiar move, knight to b5, attacking the bishop. And after the bishop goes back, a move like g5. So this is sort of the, the main line. Um, and you know, so you get, and I think, you know, black's supposed to be doing just fine here, though it's, it's always complicated. Even when, you know, white gets no advantage or anything, it's still always complicated, so everything is always worth playing for. But uh, in the game, just bishop d2, I'm just going to castle. All right, makes sense. e4. Now I would love to install my knight on f5, if you would let me. So she said no. Um... And now just h3. And he's kind of waiting. I'm not developing my bishop yet. I'm not castling. It's not obvious what black should do. So I'll just wait. I'll be patient for a second. And black comes up with the plan a6, b5. And in a lot of King's Indians, that's sort of the main plan. Um, but this game isn't a good case for this style of play because uh, it, it just didn't really work out. Now white got sort of a, a very good position coming up. Um, this also is a good move, though. Okay, she's going to move the bishop, but misplaced the white rook first. The rook was better on g1. Now f3. And here, black made an unfortunate blunder, though it's very hard to see why. Perhaps best is queen e7, just protecting the e4 square again. But instead, this move a5. And again, it's always about having the more active pieces. Um, notice that, you know, black still hasn't castled, and 
castling is kind of dangerous, so okay, we take. This makes a lot of sense. B4. Knight takes d5. So and this is actually a very powerful sacrifice. And that's sort of typical for these kinds of lines. I'm trying to bust open the center. So here, you know, a very powerful case for just opening up the center, taking advantage of your, your lead here in development. All right, and I just take back. Now, if here, which was not played, there's a lot of good moves. I suppose good enough is queen e4, with the idea that if you go here, I take your knight. If you go here, I take your rook. But also very strong is another knight sacrifice. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is sort of a cause for alarm if, if I get to do all of this. Because now if here, you know, I'm going to play bishop c4. One of these rooks is coming to the f file. This is not going to be good for black. So there's all these powerful sacrifices in the position. So you can't even really take. Oops, in the game, um, bishop g3 was played. And here Nakamura actually could have taken on g6. Again, this is a very strong continuation. And that would have been nice too. You sack both your knights <laughs> for a couple of pawns. And you know this, this center, even though sometimes it might look like a, a Tetris piece, is actually going to be really strong and powerful moving forward in the game. OK, but instead he played a, a more cautious move. White is still uh, just doing great. Rook g1, I return. Bishop c4. Now, I don't know if she understood really white's threat. It looks like, well, I just protected my pawn. But white actually has a sneaky threat here. And perhaps it was overlooked, or perhaps black just thought it was so bad there was nothing to be done. She went with bishop to a6. And now there's a killer blow already. So very unfortunate. So what move did Nakamura play in this position? D6, yeah, this is what was played. OK, I take it. Queen takes G6. Queen takes G6, yeah. Um, and now white is just simply winning. All right, attack a pinned piece, defend a pinned piece, threaten to remove the defender, black resigns. So a very powerful game. And it sort of emphasizes one of the key things in this. You are looking at peace sacrifices constantly. It's more important in all of these positions to have the more active pieces. And you want to try to be the first to castle and start an attack and open up the center, even at the cost of a piece. That's what this game really shows us. So um, yeah, and so just this idea, this was all quite slow, a6, b5. And then it was just too much when you played b4 here we had this very powerful sacrifice. And Nakamura did play it in the game. So excellent. That guy's pretty good. OK, and there's, so there's one move left, right? Go ahead. D takes c4. And so again, there's a lot of new people here, so we'll, we'll go over this one more time. It is sort of an you know, anti-positional move. You, there was a pawn in the center. Now it's over here, and it's going to get taken. Uh, but. You did give your knight this square. Your knight can go to d5. Also, now I'm ready to play a move like e5 without having to worry about you capturing on d5 first. And everything should be quite fine here for black. So that's why this is also a very common way of playing. Um, and it would be sort of remiss of me not to show a Shirov game since it's the Shirov Shabal of attack. So I'm going to show the game Shirov Frazene from Mallorca in 2004. So this might be the best. So good thing you saved the best for last, even though they're also good. Uh, bishop takes c4 is the main move. I do want to just very briefly, though, talk about the move g5. Not as common, but there's one idea that's rather nice in this position. It's You can play a move here that you probably wouldn't think about unless you knew this position. Uh, you can actually play the move e5, which looks kind of strange, because aren't you blundering a pawn? Well, uh, there are some tactical tricks here. And also, again, it's not always about the pawns. It's about having the more active pieces. 
But let's blunder for a second. Let's take the way that we kind of want to play. What would black play now? Queen a5 check, found very quickly by some of the youngest kids in the audience. So um, you can consider taking this way. So better, I think, I mean, bishop d2 is sort of the main move. Um, if you must take, you can at least take this way. And you are up a pawn, because now queen a5 runs into knight to c3. I just defend my knight. Uh, but here you can actually just castle, and this should be just fine for black. Um, yeah, I don't really know what you should do here as white because you're, you're quite far behind in development, so you have to be a little bit worried in these types of positions. Um, so that's you know, g5, not a very popular move. So instead they take here. And now always, you know, if white ever plays a move like g5, we can always go to d5. So e5. So again, if g5, knight d5, we get a similar position. So instead, bishop d2, we're going to castle. So he took. Um, and now we're, we're getting closer to taking on g4. So he attacks the bishop. Everything is attacking g4. And here, black made a mistake. So there's one way that's really bad to take on g4. And unfortunately, black played that move. Uh, so let's see if you guys are good at finding all the best moves. But can you find the worst way to take on g4? Yeah, that's, that's a lot harder. It's a harder task. You guys are too good. OK. Why do you think that one's the worst? Is that because you saw it? Yeah. Um, so either knight capture boop, is better. And then due to the question mark exclam, Arjun was able to deduce that taking with the bishop is actually the worst. And the reason is, if we trade these guys, look at the f5 square. So that knight's going to go to f5, and white already gets a huge attack in this game. So first he played f4. He traded the bishops, and knight f5. Ugh. So I'm on your bishop. I'm on your g pawn. You, you could save your bishop and go here, but I'm going to castle, and it's like, how are you? I'm going to play rook g1. You know, you can't really go there because then it's sort of bad news. Also, when I castle, now I'm going to have a rook here, so I'm going to be threatening all sorts of stuff on d6. Uh, what to do? Um, I guess we can show one example. If you castle, which was not played. I think I can play here first. I can like castle. Like the problem is, as soon as I ever castle, let's do bad moves for you. I'm on this guy, so you have to worry about this guy. And then I'm bringing this guy in, and this guy's going here. So there's all sorts of bad stuff that could possibly happen. White's going to get a very, very fast attack. In the game, Black tried to play a clever move, and this move is OK. Um, I went to h4 because I want to trade for that guy. But now I take on g7. OK. So unsurprisingly, he got a, a rather big attack <laughs> on, that, uh, on the black king here. So a nice attack. You might think we're just going to move it. No, we're just going to castle. Because now if we go here, which is a little mistake, we have a strong move. Knight e4. And so even though we gave up a piece, we're threatening bishop to c3, skewering the king and the rook, and attacking d6 a bunch of times. So you can't actually take. Um, so instead, knight to f2 was played. It seems nice enough. I'm going to win some more material. Um, but now here. And black might want to think about actually taking the knight, because the knight is you know kind of scary. But white went here which is a big mistake. And now white has a winning position, believe it or not. So first he just took back. And again, you can't really take the knight because of bishop c3. So we drop that guy back. No many ways to win, but he played f5. Queen b6, getting the queen off the same die, uh, same file as the rook. f5. 
F6. Uh, you're just solidifying that guy there, but also creating sort of a, a net that might be important later because it's you know, really squeezing the black king in there. Um, OK, we'll trade those guys. And when he went back, knight c5, so I'm coming into d7. h6. Well, let's just waste a move just to sort of illustrate. If here there's like a very complicated mate, starting like with this, then it's knight f5, I think, so you're going to want to go here. Um, and this doesn't really work because of here. So you're threatening multiple mates. So black actually has to be really careful. So, OK, he didn't do that. h6, so that in some lines his king can run away. But this isn't going to be enough to help him. And this was great, because Shirov found all the best moves in all these positions. He just played a fantastic game. Uh, I think this move is really tough. Lots of moves should win. Like, I think either knight at e6 actually wins. Um, knight d7 might win. But he played the absolute best move, which I think would be really hard for people to play here. Knight g d6. Yeah, I'm pretty sure either knight here wins. Um, Pretty sure something like this is great. I guess queen c4, queen b3. Um, yeah, so I think something like this is dangerous. You want, you want this guy? Um, so I think that actually does win. In the game, he played knight to f5, which seems weird. You know, this awesome knight, you know, boxing the king out. Why would you want to trade him? Well, you can't really trade. That's part of the point. Because now I take here, and you know I have this threat on your queen. Um, and it's just not really easy to deal with. So this is actually just quite strong for white. So black did not play there. 97. 97. I think you should probably take it, but he went here. Hook. And now he got to play one last nice finishing move. Again, there might be more than one way to win here. But we'll, we'll finish the class with just this one last exercise here. Um, can you play like Shirov? You want to play the absolute best move? Because it's, it's mate in a couple if you, if you find the right move here. Otherwise, you can win slowly. But 95, yeah, much better. You saw it? Yeah, Arjun saw it way before Dennis. OK, for the record, let the record show. Arjun saw it way before Dennis or at the same time. Um, OK, so very good, both of you. Uh, you found the, the finishing move to this game. And black resigned. Because if here, then here. Also, if not here, then you know, here and here. So if here, rook d7 and uh, nothing but badness would just be a, a quick checkmate. So awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's a very aggressive system. Um, it's very fun to play as, as both sides if you like this aggressive attacking chess. That's what the semi-slav is all about. You, both sides have great chances to win. It pays to know your stuff in these lines. So we're going to get this tournament started here in just a second. So uh, thanks, guys, for, for coming out. We got a lot of people here. It was great.